Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on fronosphoto.com, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, I'm gonna send you that guide for free. Jared Pullen, fronosphoto.com, and this is a preview of the Nikon 600 millimeter F6.3 VRS lens for the Nikon Z mount system. Now we are building a new set here at the new studio. We're not on it quite yet. That's why I'm still sitting at my desk, but that will be coming soon. But also this isn't a full review because Nikon says that this is definitely a pre-production lens. I think it's, great and I would love to call it a review so maybe we end up putting that in the title because I didn't have any issues with it. I really think that Nikon says stuff like that just in case you do find an issue they'll be like it's firmware we'll fix it but whatever I had no problems with this lens because it is a fantastic lens. So what did I do with it? Well I took it to the zoo and I went all the way to Africa and back in a matter of minutes as you'll see in just a few minutes. I also shot it on the Nikon Z9 with the updated firmware to 4.10 so it has the new bird AF as well as plain AF which I didn't use because I wasn't shooting plain at the zoo. So let's take a look at the outside of the lens. You have your normal function buttons around here. Now keep in mind that the buttons around this part, they're all gonna do the same function. It's just that you have a bunch of them so that as you turn the lens, you can still access them. You also have another button over here. You have your control ring, which I still haven't found a use for myself. When, even when I'm using the Canons, I turn it off because I don't wanna accidentally hit it. I know some people like to put their ISO or aperture there, but most of that stuff is easily accessible right from the camera itself, so I personally don't use it. You'll also notice that Nikon is not putting in a screen on this anymore, and I think the screen might have reached the end of its life because it was a waste of time, engineering, as well as money, so I don't think you'll see it again. That's just me coming up with that because we don't see it on the new 135 Plena either, and I just think that they've done away with it because it's not necessary. It does feel really nice in the hands. It's nice and balanced. It weighs in at three pounds or 1,390 grams for you guys playing at home. You've got your click lens hood right here. Always use your lens hood, put it on, boom, it's gonna bayonet backwards. You have a 95 millimeter uh, filter thread, which means you have a 95 millimeter lens cap on the front element of this, and it is really nice. It feels good in the hands. I handheld it, which means I took off the tripod foot. There was no need for me to have this on at all. Now, if you're someone who's gonna be out in the wilderness and you want to use a monopod or a tripod, you certainly can do it because three pounds does get a little heavy over some time. But the way that I used it at the zoo, it was perfectly fine to hold around. And if you got muscles like these, punch in. Punch in on the edit, punch in on those. Um, you should be fine hand holding this. One thing I wish Nikon would correct is that when you loosen the tripod collar, you're not hearing any clicks, right? There's no click, click, click. The Canons, and I believe the Sonys as well, will have a click when it lines up in the center. That's right, it clicks into place unlike Nikon. I just like knowing that, oh, that center, it just feels like it's going right there. I wish that's something that Nikon would change. They haven't done it yet, but it's a minor thing. It's not a reason you don't go buy this. It's just a little addition that I like on the other systems. There's only a few switches on the side of the lens. You've got your auto to manual. You also have your full to limit. What you don't have is VR. They've not really put that in a lot of their lenses recently. So you have the VR to turn it off inside the camera. Now, what I will say is I had it on normal mode and this really only happens with the Nikons is when I was trying to photograph the bird, it's just constantly clicking in and moving and jiggling around the screen. You can see it, I didn't like it. So I moved it into sport mode and I'm like, oh, that's much better, it's smoother, and I don't have it being herky-jerky and changing my frame around. So, Nikon is calling this the, Stephen, what color? Yellow. Yeah, oh, you, that looks yellow to you? No, my, my shirt looks yellow, this looks gold. So I would consider this the gold lens, a, a gold ring, like Canon has their red ring. This is a gold ring. Nikon likes to call it a yellow ring. I don't know who they talk to about that, but that would not be what I would call this. Now, in terms of VR, you've got your five and a half stops of compensation. And then if you do have it paired with IBIS in one of the bodies, then you will get six stops. Now back to the normal slash sport, Maybe it should be on sport by default so you don't get that herky-jerky thing, which I guarantee you a lot of people when they get a, their first lens that does that, they're probably thinking that their lens might be broken.
broken. I know I used to get phone calls about that at Allen's all the time, and they're like, what's wrong with my lens? No, that's, that's, that's normal. So just know that that's normal for your lens to be doing that. So that's pretty much the outside of the lens until we you know, get to the sniff test and the wind tunnel test. But let's turn to the computer here and look at some of the photos I captured. This is a Gibbons right here. And when I started to photograph the Gibbons, I was too close because I was at 600 millimeters because, well, it's a prime lens. I actually had to back up quite a bit to make sure that I didn't cut off any of the limbs of the Gibbons. And, and that is a good time to bring up that Nikon has an 180 to 600 millimeter 5.6 to 6.3 zoom lens. Now it's not part of the S line, it's heavier than this, it's bigger than this. I use that to shoot at the zoo as well as a baseball game and it is an extremely versatile lens. And we're gonna put some side by side because I have two pictures that are very similar that we're gonna see what the differences are. But for now, let's take a look at another Gibbons. Look how strong these guys are, or girls. I couldn't tell if it was a guy or a girl. But they're holding on to this thing and just crawling up it and hanging there. I'm not that strong, I couldn't do that. Um, but they're, they're stronger than me. Then I quickly move in to Africa where I got these zebras, black and white. You can see what 6.3 gives you in the background, right? That's the fall off that you're gonna get. Now you can put a teleconverter on this. You can put a 1.4 on there. You can put a 2X on there. I'm not gonna recommend that you do that. Aperture's gonna go up, quality's gonna go down slightly, but that's gonna give you 840 millimeters with a 1.4 and 1200 millimeters with a 2X converter. But you're going from 6.3 to like F11 at that point. Very close to F11 with a 2X. Let me jump in here real quick because I wanna show you Fro-Pak 4 in action on this photo taken with an Icon 600 millimeter 6.3, starting with Blue's Clues. Brooklyn, C41, Copper Tone, DeLorean, High C, Kaleidoscope, Mel Brooks, Saltwater Taffy, Thick, Tin Type, and Wet Hot American Summer. But all the way from Fro Pack 1, my all time favorite is Skittles with one click and boom. So look, if you want to speed up your raw workflow, give yourself a great starting point, or you're just tired of other people's presets not doing what they're supposed to do, we created 14 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack4. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. If you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or you can get the Grand Slam bundle that includes Fropack 1, 2, 3, and 4, as well as Skittles and Save even more. Now, let's get back to the video. All right, back into the computer here. Um, I mean, the pictures are very good. The focus was snappy. Focus did what it needed to do. Didn't run into any issues there. We've got the zebra drinking out of the water. I wish I had the tongue there, but they were just fully drinking out of the water in Africa. And you know, I needed to get back here to the studio to make this video, but it's fine. Like it's what I expected, because I expect these lenses to be fantastic. Nikon has done a great job with these PF lenses. This is a has a phase Fresnel element, just like the original 300 f4, which is super tiny, was fantastic. The 500 5.6. PF, which was a F mount lens. This is basically the same size and weight as that, if not slightly lighter, and you get the 600 millimeters instead of 500 because that PF does make this lens much smaller and it is fantastic. I I'm really happy with the quality that I got out of it. We got a cheetah just sitting up here on the roof. Uh, I put on cheetah AF, actually I put on cat AF for this. Another cat right here, you've got a, a, a lioness. She looked great. The sharpness on the eye, fantastic. The color rendition, because you know I banged out some Skittles on this with the preset, looked really good. But everybody loves when I show you the Eagles. E-A-G-L-E-S, Eagles! If you ever come to Philly, you're gonna hear that quite a lot. Go Bird! Uh, I put on the new Bird AF, which honestly doesn't matter in this situation because the birds aren't moving anywhere. Super sharp, gorgeous as expected. Very overcast day, the, the clouds were up there, the sun came out a little later, but not a super vibrant lit day. So this is what I got with it. I'm at 1 800th of a second at 6.3 at 2500 ISO. Keep in mind that you don't wanna generally shoot a shutter speed slower than the focal length of the lens. So this is one, this is a 600 millimeter lens. You generally don't wanna go below 1 640th, but you do have the image stabilization, can counter that, the IBIS in the body. It's not the same as it was 15, 20 years ago where that adage was what it was, but it's just a good rule of thumb. You don't wanna go too slow, you might get a little bit of shake in there somewhere. Um, then I stepped further back, 
uh, with the Eagles. You can see that I'm, you can't see that I'm shooting through a fence, but this is the same fence that I'm shooting through, just in front of me. This is what that background looks like. This is how you get the, uh, the full Eagle in there. And again, it looks really nice. So I wanted to go back and get a super tight shot of the Eagle, and I ended up getting a little too close to it. It didn't yell at me. I mean, it did squawk a little bit, but your close focusing distance is 13 feet. So at one point, a red box showed up. That's just like, you're stop, you're too close. I took a step back and this was it. This is where I was able to fill the frame fully. Now, the next image is from the 180 to 600 at 600 millimeters. Now this was taken months ago and I wanna put them side by side. Now just remember, these were taken in different lighting situations, so they're not gonna be perfect. The one eagle, which is here on the right, his head is tilted a little different, but when we zoom in here, let's zoom in. This is as close as you're gonna get to a side-by-side -side comparison taken at different times. On the left here, you have the 180 to 600. On the right, you have the newer 600 millimeter 6.3. It's very difficult to see the difference with these side-by-side. -side. Just again, they're angled ever so slightly different. There's a reason you would get a 180 to 600 over something like this. There's also a reason you would get a fixed lens prime like this over the other. Do you need the versatility? Do you need to not spend as much money because this is an expensive lens? It comes in at 4,800 bucks. The 180 to 600 is $3,100 less, which makes that a $1,700 lens. The people that are gonna go with something like this are the ones that want that prime look. You do get a slightly sharper image, in my opinion, when you're using the primes versus the zooms. I don't know that most people will see that, but this is the S line, so it's the higher end type of lens versus the 180 to 600, which is not considered the S line. The focus might be slightly faster in something like this because you're not moving as many elements, you don't have to zoom, it's not as balanced as this, but they are both fantastic lenses. As you can see from this sample image, they are very similar and you'll have to make your mind up which one is the right one for you. Let me jump in here and say, are you looking to build your very own online portfolio? Well, if you said yes, you should use what I've been using for close to 15 years now, Squarespace. The reason I use Squarespace, it's simple, easy, affordable, and you don't need to know any coding. To get your 14-day free trial, head on over to squarespace.com slash photo. If you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Now, let's get back to the video. Now, the last image right here, flamingos. I love going there and shooting them. The color with Skittles looks fantastic here. I love the quality, the clarity, the tones of the Z9. It looks fantastic for the nature. I mean, I'm going to Africa in at the end of November, and this could be something you would consider to take there if you weren't going to take a $16,000 or $15,500 600mm f4 with a built-in TC. I mean, I would lug the bigger piece of glass there because I want the better bokeh that I would get out of that. But for people that are weekend warriors, you love shooting birds, you want to shoot uh, uh, moto, motor type sports, if that's what you're looking to do and this isn't your full-time thing, I mean, this is a great option but so is the 180 to 600. Both of them are fantastic lenses and you just have to decide for yourself which way to go and maybe the sniff test will tell you which one you should go with. Oh man, it smells like the Serengeti at 1237 in the afternoon. So good. Wind tunnel test? We've never tried one of those down here, Steven. I bet you I'm out of focus. <sighs> It, it passed it passed the wind tunnel test. That means it's a it's a must buy. You, you should probably check our links out down below for an affiliate link, which helps us keep making these videos. But if you do want to purchase this or the 180 to 600, it is linked down below. There's one last thing that I want to leave you with, and I want to give big ups to uh, Nikon for creating some great glass. They've done a great job with their one twos, their one eights, the versatile lenses like the 180 to 600 and stuff like this with the PF, uh, the Fresnel element in it. They've done a great job giving people a lot of what they want and you have the option to put some Tamron lenses on there as well. So what do you think about this lens? Would you get this or the 180 to 600? Let me know down below. Thank you guys very much for watching. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.